Thank you very much. Thank you for the, the invitation here. It's a honor to uh, speak for uh, your, your birthday. Uh, I'm going to talk about a joint work with Gilbert Levitt. And um, so the, the basic problem is the following. So ta start with G, uh, torsion free hyperbolic group. And for many things, you may, you may even think, think that G is a, is a free group, maybe. Okay. But it's, sometimes it's easier to understand in a, to, to, uh, to explain things in, a, in this wider context. Um, and then you're given a subgroup H, finitely generated always, uh, sometimes quasi-convex, but not always. And the question uh, I want, I would like to, I mean, to, to, to uh, I would like to understand the automorphisms of H that extend to G. Okay, so that's, that's the question is understand So this notation is the set of automorphisms of H that extend to G, to an automorphism of G. Okay, and uh, in fact, inner Automorphisms are there. Okay, that, that, that's a subgroup of, of automorphisms of H. All inner automorphisms obviously extend. So, in fact, we, we will really be interested in the quotient group. And um, so, for instance, the basic question is: Is such a group finitely generated? Okay, is is this guy finitely generated or finitely presented? That's the, the kind of question. Um, another, so that, that's okay, question, question one. Okay, describe or say something about this group. Okay. So even, even if, if G is the free group. Uh, second question, which is, uh, maybe, which is related, uh, we hope, okay, we hope it can help uh, for the first one, is um, assume, assume that uh, this group of automorphisms contains a complicated automorphism. So by what do I mean by this? Well, maybe H, maybe maybe H is a free group, and maybe alpha is a you know a fully irreducible uh, automorphism. Right? So then, can you say something about the um, embedding? So show that that the embedding of H into G is simple. Okay. I mean, there, it should be embedded in a very special way. Yeah, well, maybe. Yeah, so, yeah, that will be a, a theorem. Uh, um, yes. uh, simple. Okay. So, I it's simple, uh, and, and even if it's, sometimes it will be complicated, but, uh, but it, should be, it should be visible from the embedding that such automorphisms uh, extend. So, so that that's the that's the the topic. Um, so, for instance, a, a version of, of this you can uh, variant could be assume that all automorphisms extend. So, uh, so the, the most complicated one do extend. So. Uh, you know. uh, 
G. So all of them, or maybe finite index, okay. But, uh, okay. Uh, H up to finite index. <laughs> Okay, so say something of the ending in this case. All right, so uh, that's what I'm I'm gonna uh, talk about. And um, so before um, uh, stating uh, results, let me first describe things about how does one understand. Uh, the Automorphism group of a, a hyperbolic group. The the um, one one very important result is the following, which is due to Bezvina, Poulin, and Rips. So it so it, it's Bezvina, Poulin argument followed by Rips theory, and it's the following. So assume. that uh, out of G is infinite, then G has a non-trivial splitting over a, a cyclic group, maybe trivial. So, You're still in the context of hyperbolic yes. So my group. So in all the all the talk, G will be a hyperbolic group. So yes. So that's wrong if uh, G is not a hyperbolic group. Um, can I can I erase this? Thank you. All right. So the. So the, the idea is you, you, you look at the action of G on its kilograph, which is a hyperbolic space. You twist it by the infinitely many automorphisms that you are given. You get an action on an R3, then you apply rib theory that studies uh, groups actions on R3s, and you get a splitting over a cyclic group. So that's uh, a first thing which shows a relation between automorphisms and splittings. Okay. Now, once you, your group splits, you want to organize them. You want to understand how you know, splitting fits to fit together. And that's the role of GHJ decompositions. So, so the, let me give a definition. Well, GHJ decomposition. of G, uh, understood uh, over cyclic groups, is, <coughs> um, is, a is, is a cyclic decomposition, is a well, decomposition as a graph of groups <coughs> over cyclic edge groups such that first condition you want is that edge groups are elliptic in any other uh, cyclic splitting Okay, so here elliptic, I'm using uh, Basser theory. What I mean is that they are elliptic in the Basser tree of any other uh, cyclic splitting. So in uh, and in that way, I could have said, I could have asked that they are conjugate in uh, vertex groups of other cyclic splittings. So that's a condition that's called universal ellipticity. And the second condition is a maximality condition. It should be maximal 
uh, with respect to, to property one. So it's the condition is maximal. Maximality is you, you cannot refine it. In a, you cannot properly refine it um, by still stuff satisfy, satisfying one. So that's a definition which is not very, uh, doesn't tell you uh, much. Uh, so the important part here is um, description. existence and description so this okay this is due to uh, many people and mainly uh, Sela introduced this so this, 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 this is an idea that comes from three manifold theory that was brought to group theory by Jean Sela and then by Rips and Sela and many other people in, this, in the audience so So Fujiwara, Papasu Blue, and uh, Don Willy and Sagiev. Um, so the what does do these people say? Um, well Bowditch maybe. Yeah. So the the one I may use with Maybe the, the one by Bowditch. So what uh, what they say is that, and if at least if G is freely indecomposable, well, I first draw a picture. So it's a picture you often see when you see the word JSG. So there are several kinds of of vertices. So there are. Something. Uh, what could be here? Another Z. Okay, something like that. So it's a it's a splitting with it's a decomposition with uh, cyclic edge groups. Okay. Uh, then there are surface groups here that occur. They are the, the important part. So they are they are called QH for quadratically hanging. Uh, it's because it, because I draw sur a surface group, but in, in fact, this is a surface group with boundaries, so it's nothing else than a free group. But the important point is how it's attached to the rest. It should be attached to the rest uh, by uh, the through the boundary components. Okay. Um, now, rigid groups. So the mean. So the mean. So that's the meaning of of, um, of QH. Okay. So QH. So there are three kinds of vertices. QH is Surfaces, okay. um, uh, uh, surfaces, but attached to the rest through the boundary component. There are uh, cyclic groups, okay, which, okay, are just cyclic. And the third, third uh, category is rigid, and rigid just means there is that there is no further splitting. So further means you cannot refine this this um, th this splitting here at a rigid vertex. That's that's the that's the meaning. Okay. okay. And um, moreover, in the, in this setting, there is a canonical one. So there is a such a splitting that is um, uh, invariant under all automorphisms of G. Okay, so th this is a so so I'm <laughs> how do you do this, Chloe? <laughs> so 
Okay, this is maybe I'm not sure whether this is good Hebrew. <laughs> <laughs> you should write the one as an American. Um, and so yes, so there is such 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 a such a this the bounded construction of it, or they give you a, a decomposition that is invariant under all automorphisms of the of the group G. Okay, so the, it's so yes. So for what I'm interested, for instance, here's a consequence. Uh, easy consequence. So. Um, the first consequence is you, you want to understand the automorphisms of H that extend to G for H, those vertices here. My H is GV, so, G, so that, that's a, one of those vertex groups. So let me group of the JJ decomposition. Okay. Yeah. This group? Yeah. Sure. Oh. Yes. So exactly. So for instance, if you take the Z, of obviously the, the group of automorphisms of Z that extend, okay, maybe it's finite. I mean, because already the automorphism of Z is finite. But that's true for rigid groups. So that's an important fact. If H is a rigid vertex group, then this is finite. And that's a consequence of this fact. If there were a lot of automorphisms that did extend to G, then there would be a further splitting, you know, using this, I mean, a version of this, okay, of the basic napoleon rips theorem. And now, if if um, if H is QH vertex, so w w what you know is that this um, I mean th this whole graph of groups is uh, canonical. Is, is yes, it's canonical. It's invariant under all automorphisms of G. So the automorphisms of of this group here that will extend, they will preserve the reference and permute the boundary components. And by, by, by Den theorem, this, 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 is, um, this group here is the mapping class group of, of the surface with boundary. OK, so what you get is that uh, the group that you, that you get is contained in the mapping class group of the surface. Let me denote by sigma the surface here. Okay, where here you allow you allow to to do whatever you want with a with a boundary component, you can permute them, and there is a uh, a fact that the if you take the mapping class group, maybe the pure mapping class group. Yep. So the so here I'm looking at homeomorphisms that are the identity on the um, on the boundary components, then. Any such homeomorphism extends you know, in a trivial way by, by the identity on the rest. Um, I mean, I, here I'm thinking in, in a topological way. Uh, so you, you extend the homeomorphism as the identity on the rest of this graph of groups, and which you think of as a graph of spaces very secretly. Um, and, you, and, uh, and so you get that this group is, is, um, is contained here. So and so, th those groups just uh, have uh, differ by a finite index. So essentially, you can, if you care only, uh, you, you I mean, you, up to finite index. Okay, the, the the group here of automorphisms of this this QH group that extend to G is exact is the mapping class group. Okay, so I just up to finite index. This is the mapping class group. Okay. Now, 
But that's for very, very special H's. Okay, that's the one you get from the JHA decomposition. That's maybe that's probably not the one you want to understand uh, to start with. So where should I? There's, there's yeah, there's, there's one, one free slot. Sorry? This is a group, the mapping class group. The set of homeomorphism of the surfaces up to isotopy. It's, M. it's a M. Is, it, is that okay, yes, but mapping class group? Is the group on the left is it known it's to be Yes, yes. Okay. The, both groups are infinite. I mean, in general, I mean, this, yeah, the one I want to think about. Okay. So, so there are exceptional cases, like if you look at a pair of pants, so then. Um, then uh, you should think of them as being rigid. Okay, yeah. that's kind of, of the boundary. Um, so now, um, now it's a fact that the, all, all this which I just mentioned extends to relatively hyperbolic group. So, for instance, the uh, besvina poulin rips theorem, it works here. This is still true. Um, so, here G is relatively hyperbolic. And then, if the group of automorphism theorem, the group after automorphisms of the group is infinite, then there is a non-trivial splitting over a cyclic group or uh, a subgroup of the parabolic group. Or, or, uh, parabolic. Okay, and so in general we say that this is a, an elementary Okay, a group that is either cyclic or contained in a parabolic group. It's just that's the definition of a parabolic. Okay, so you can apply this, and there is also. So, so here, are you looking at out, out g or at out, out g relative to the subgroup? Yeah. Okay. That you're right. That yes, you want the uh, the, the group of automorphisms that preserve. Okay. Yes. Exactly. Yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. So th these are the guys that preserve the conjugacy class of the parabolic group. To preserve, yes, just to preserve here. Yes, not, not the identity. Yes, there are two, two meanings of this possible. Yes, yeah, so here I just want to ask that P is sent inside P. Okay. I mean, well, yeah. yes, up to conjugacy. Yes, so alpha of P is a conjugate of P. Okay. For some G in the in group. So then, the, so, so so this part works the same, and J J decomposition works the same too. Okay, in this context, and so, so here there were three kinds of vertices. So there is a you have to enlarge the elementary case here. The only new thing that you have to add here. It's either cyclic or, you know, or parabolic. Okay, you you, you get a, a, a decomposition uh, in which the vertex group are either cyclic or or parabolic. Um, I yeah maybe I, f I I should mention that the, the the set of splittings that we look at. Ah, oh, it's hard to. Aha, uh -huh, yeah. Is the set of splitting, so here it's not over, we, we, we won't look only at cyclic uh, sp splitting, we look at elementary splitting. And we should add the requirement that they are relative to P, meaning that P should be elliptic in the splittings, and because that's what you get here. So that's something I forgot to say. And 
the splitting are relative to p and the, the meaning is that okay p is conjugate in a vertex group so this way the definition is is, is right and and so what i was saying is about the JJ decomposition you have three you have a new kind of of uh, vertex possible vertex groups it's, it's a parabolic uh, group and then it, if it is parabolic then it's the full parabolic group so that would be just the full p so now we can still uh, describe where we can still describe the automorphisms of those vertex groups which extend so in the rigid case same ha thing happens nothing it ex extends in the QH case nothing I mean everything extends like the whole mapping class group and there is w w what does extend in the parabolic case so let me add uh, 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 a new P and maybe you have subgroup here E1 E2 what is the can you describe the, the group of automorphisms of P that extend? Well, yes, and that's exactly the automorphisms of P that uh, acts trivially on the edge groups. So uh, that's, let me write here. This is very disturbing. <coughs> okay, so if. Par elementary, so they are just subgroups of P. So they can be, you know, any subgroup of P. So, so uh, uh, finitely finitely generated in, in general. But that's it. And how can this picture then? Completely. Uh, the same as in yes. the yeah, Yes. Hmm. Yeah, so the, f the fact that the out of so P to G, then this is up to finite index, okay, let me put a dot for up to finite index, like, like here, that's the set of uh, automorphisms let <coughs> of P that uh, restrict to the incident edge group, E1, E2, uh, as uh, to, uh, uh, so I would like to say the identity, but it's the identity up to change of base point. So uh, to, is there respect to an inner, to H, uh, to a P, we are in P, in a P inner automorphism. Okay. To so the conjugation by some element of P. So th this, this kind of, of, of subgroup is called call Macul group of P relative to E1, E2, but okay, I won't. Okay, so up to now, I just, I mean, I, I, I did describe very, very specific uh, groups of this kind, um, but in fact, it, it, it's a little bit more general of what my one might first uh, think. So here's a, an important example. Excuse me. I don't, I don't hear. Yes. I, for instance, I didn't say anything, so wait. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it, so, an so, 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 yes, so this is, um, how, how, how does one apply this? Well, um, take, take, um, so now go back to G, a hyperbolic group torsion free and H inside G quasi convex so for instance in the free group that's automatic I mean uh, it was supposed to be finitely generated and mal normal so that's a non 
a non-empty condition. My normal means that if the definition is that uh, if this is uh, infinite, then G has to lie in H. Okay. Uh, this. Okay, that's the definition of malnormality. And in this case, it's a result by uh, by Bowditch that then G is hyperbolic relative to H. So now we think, so it's, it, it, it's a big group in general. I mean, we think of the free group. You have a malnormal free subgroup. It's a big, it's a big group, but, um, but because it's malnormal, you, you, you can think of it as a parabolic group. And now if you look at this picture and at the result that's here, what you get is that um, in the, so what, what you get is that the automorphisms so, so theorem, say, theorem. So the automorphism that extend is of this form. It's a so-called so, so Macul group. Okay, up to. No, that's in that's if if it's more general than it. If H, oh, or maybe, yeah, that's, that's you, you're you're right. Um, okay, I, I you're right. I, I'll say something. Okay. So, but I'm still claiming that's true. Uh, okay, so assume under this hyp hypothesis, okay, so if H in G is quasi-convex and malnormal, then the group of automorphisms that extend is more or less equal, I mean, up to finite index to a Macul group So remember that it means that there are finitely many finitely generated subgroups of this kind, and you act, you you want the automorphism to act uh, as an inner automorphism of this subgroup. Um, so that's true. So what uh, you you're po pointing at is, I did assume, I did assume that um, the parabolic group was a, a vertex group. So, and in fact, it, it, it doesn't have to be the case. But um, but the only other possibility is that this so this parabolic group it has to be contained up to conjugacy in, in, in some of the sp of the of the vertices and it cannot be here I mean it cannot be in the in the QH part because um, because uh, uh, because uh, we are looking at relative decomposition so it is the, the only possibility other possibility is that P would be contained inside a rigid group. And in this case, this implies that the, the, the group of automorphisms that extend is trivial. Okay, so you can, so, or finite. Because, or, okay, there's, there's no automorphism here that extend. And, inside. sorry? Inside yes. So, well, if it does extend to the whole thing, it does extend. If an, um, if an automorphism of P extends to the rigid, then to the whole thing, it extends to the rigid. Is that, is that well, we just restrict. No, uh, sorry. Oh, the splitting is invariant. Ah, yeah. Oh, yes, okay. That's, yeah. Okay, sorry. Um, what do I want to say next? Yes, so you, you Uh, so, in, 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 so if it's trivial, then it's also a Macul group. If you want. Uh, okay, so that's that's um, so that's a, a, a first result that describes essentially what's going on uh, when you're malnormal and quasi-convex. And here you have a, more or less a complete understanding. So uh, as a corollary, we, we can deduce that uh, th this group, in this under these assumptions, okay, uh, this group is uh, uh, is finitely presented and even has a has virtually a finite uh, classifying space.
Let me just write it this way. Um, this, is, this is it. Now, let me now uh, go back. Let me try now to, uh, to, um, to extend, to, to, to remove some, some, so, some of these uh, hypotheses here. Okay. So your definition of a Macaul group is what? Okay. Definition of Macaul group. Um, think topologically. Okay. You have a space. X, whose fundamental group is G, is uh, is uh, is your the group, and you have subspaces, disjoint subspaces, whose fundamental groups correspond to subgroups E1, E2, E3. Okay, and look at the homeomorphisms of X that are the identity on no, these I groups. Mean, that I understood, but oh, sorry. Uh, you're making no further restrictions on X in terms of for E, you know, or something. No, 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 that's. No, so the, the, yes, the, the the hypotheses are here. That's a complete hypothesis. It, um, so, but I mean, at what level of generality do we know that Macaul groups are finite examples? I mean, uh, like for for ultra relatively hyperbolic groups, every every we proved with Gilbert that uh, every Macaul group is uh, finitely presented. And and so it has a fi finite index subgroup with a finite classifying space. Okay. So, um, so now what? Uh, e now uh, le let's go to the the, um, the 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 second question is say that is asking. Uh, okay, assume you have a complicated uh, automorphism of H. So how is H embedded in G? No, um, so here's one version. So yes, so uh, here's a theorem. Let me just put it as a theorem or a corollary. If H uh, inside G is quasi uh, convex uh, and free, so it's a free group. And alpha from H to H uh, is a complicated automorphism that extends. Uh, okay. G with so so uh, what I want to to ask is that as alpha is uh, fully reducible. E whip. So this means that uh, no free factor is periodic under alpha. And I want also to add uh, aperiodic, meaning no conjugacy class is periodic under under the guy. So the, those two are are equivalent by I guess by Bethlehem in, in Handel to the to the requirement that there's no well, every invariant uh, finitely generated subgroup of H is uh, as finite index or is trivial. Okay, so no, uh, every uh, periodic uh, conjugacy class of finitely generated subgroup of H is either uh, trivial or finite index. Okay, so that that's a complicated automorphism. Something that mixes everything, uh, in particular, at the level of finite generated And so. Yes. Then, <laughs> so then, um, uh, then, 
H has finite index in a free factor. So you, you you write G as H at free product G prime, and here there is a finite index inclusion here. Okay, so that's uh, that. Yes, that's right. Uh, and the, so here is the here is the proof. <laughs> well, it, it, if Assume first that it's malnormal, okay? If H is uh, malnormal, uh, then, um, you know, then the, you know, the, okay, the, the guys that extend, okay, is a McCool group. Okay, but but there's no, um, I mean, but alpha is here, and it fixes nobody, so it has to be everything. Okay. Everything. Okay. So it, it, here, that's up to finite index. Okay. Everything, but uh, at the end, it, yeah. and um, but but if you look at the at how the proof works, then what you see is that what are the the groups that that define the Markov group? They are the the groups that are that are the incident edge groups here, and so these groups here have to be trivial. So here I'm cheating a little bit. I mean, because I mean you should really uh, this can, this can't happen. And okay. And, I mean, so the, I mean, if you see, if you, if you believe in this picture, which is, which you shouldn't, in, if the group is not is um, is not fully indecomposable, but if you believe in this picture, then this says that those groups here should be trivial, and so p is a free factor. And okay, I'm just morally morally cheating on the proof, but uh, not on the not so much. Yes. <coughs> So here, 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 that's enough. Yeah, because that's for the next. I didn't want to uh, to put uh, too many statements. <coughs> now assume it's not. If if H so uh, and in in this case, what you get is H is a free factor. I mean, there's no no need for the finite index <laughs> part. I guess uh, yes. In this case, well, yeah, okay. If it, it just, it's not normal, <laughs> okay. Uh, so, in um, so in general, if not, okay. Uh, so, so if, if not malnormal, okay. Well, you can look at its common surizer, okay, which is um, you know, the maximal. The, 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 the Maximal uh, sub supergroup of finite index in G, which is well defined here. Uh, so it, this has finite index in H because H is quasi convex. And there is, um, <coughs> here you can use a, a result by, uh, by uh, so Gittig, intra, small man, G, rips, and Zagiev, which says that there is. There is something that is called the width, and which is finite, and using an argument by Agol, many groves and Mannings. What you get is that from the non malnormality of H hat, there, there, you can look at these guys, where for G in G. <coughs> Uh, and they form a finite uh, collection of H hat conjugacy class. Oh, 
of subgroups on each hat. And now it's easy to check that the extension of alpha, uh, well, let me denote by this, the extension of alpha to h hat has still to be a uh, same, has to, satis has still be, to be uh, fully reducible and aperiodic. Uh, and so, but it, it should also preserve this finite set of conjugacy class of, uh, of subgroups that's prohibited. Should, should permute them. And that's a contradiction, except well, a contradiction if um, if it's not malnormal. And so you get that H hat itself is malnormal, and it's a free product, a free factor. By the argument that's here. Why do you need H hat here at all? I mean, this collection of conjugacy classes would have been finite for H as well, right? That's true. That's true. But then uh, uh, that's uh, here. <laughs> I mean, at some point you have to say that uh, if it's not okay, the, the guy that you that you get, um, uh, they they are in the normalizer of H and this kind of stuff. I mean, you have to make the distinction between H and its normalizer, and okay, I don't want to. I'm and, uh, skipping stuff. Use, uh, full of some point, some uh, yes, here I'm using the fact that there's no invariant uh, finitely generated subgroups, finite collection. So oh, here, oh, yeah, oh, well. yeah, because I don't know these are cyclic or whatever. Oh. And I don't know oh, the, okay. this, the identity on them. Okay. Yes. So here, yes. Okay, so, so we have more theorems of this form saying that if, if uh, there is some complicated automorphism that extend, uh, then the group embeds in a nice way, uh, that don't use quasi-convexity neither. Here is the first one. Okay. Why not A? So assume the first one is assume that H is um, a closed surface group. So H, G, and a priori we don't ask about quasi convexity. No quasi convexity hypothesis. Um, and assume that this group contains a pseudo-Anosov. Okay, so that's a complicated uh, guy. Then, uh, then there are two options. Well, the first one is close to what's happening here. Either H has finite index in a free factor. Of G, so it means like in uh, Mark talks that you, you have this surface and there is this the, the, the automorphism uh, extends to a to a um, to a finite index supergroup, so it descends to a to a finite cover, um, uh, and, and this finite cover here is a free factor of uh, of G. That's there's no exception. No, that's fine. Uh, and uh, Second possibility is that there exists, uh, so we have to take in some power. Uh, we can assume that, well, the, not we can assume that alpha k is induced by an inner automorphism of H. Uh, 
uh, of g, sorry, not of h. Uh, in h, it's pseudonym of, of. Okay. Okay. So what this means is that, so we can say more. I mean, the, the mapping torus, okay, the mapping torus, uh, let me dis denote it like this. I mean, it's not very. Okay, let me. Okay. T H T minus one. Okay, so the mapping torus of alpha k embeds now um, uh, this one embeds into G. So in particular, it's not because it convex. So yeah, and what, what you you really see is you, you see one of this uh, hyperbolic uh, 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 three manifold that fiber over the circle inside the group G. G was assumed to be hyperbolic. Yes, yes, yes. Here it's important. But, uh, it's really hyper in, the, in those kind of statements, we use the fact that there's no Z2 in G. Uh, okay, so that tells you that tells you that the meaning is somehow it's nice. Here, here you can you, you, you this has consequence, for example, in the first case. Well. Well, you you more or less understand what it means. I mean, it, it's it's the is out. It's enough to ex extend to to this finite index supergroup. So that's 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 uh, commensurable to a mapping class group in this case. In the second case, or in the second case, we can we cannot say very much, but we can say that every actually every automorphism is also um, in in uh, in in there uh, ex tends to um, uh, extend to G by, by an inner automorphism. So here uh, is, a, is a purely uh, pseudons of group. I, but in this case, we, we do not we cannot claim anything like finite generation or, or finite property. Otherwise, you have zero, right? Yes, exactly. Hmm. So the group of automorphisms of H that extend to G. Yeah. Ah, this one. So that's the group. Yeah, I didn't. I, I forgot to define this. So what is this H hat? H hat. It's um, it's the the finite index subgroup that the, the finite index supergroup that contains H. Okay. The, and that's a free factor. Well, that's the that's a commensurator of, of H if you wish. Okay. Um, so we have mm, okay. So we, we have other results. So what's what, five minutes? Okay. So theorem is so the same conclusion holds. If H is a free group and alpha is um, is uh, as uh, before uh, a periodic. Fully irreducible. Okay. So, what does it mean? So, if if um, okay, alpha. So it's an automorphism that extends to G. Okay. So if some complicated automorphism of the free group extends, then either you you uh, have finite index in the free factor. Or um, you, uh, the mapping torus of the automorphism embeds in the in your group, and uh, and thing. Um, so I have more statements. I can also do so, so proof. Is that stronger than the theorem you wrote down before? Yeah, because there's no quasi-convexity absorption. So, so it's strictly. It's 
Yes, yes, it's yes. But the proof, uh, why, why, uh, the proof uses the, the other case. I mean, uh, surprising. Yeah. So that's why I, yeah, I decided to ex explain the, this. So let me give uh, another statement. There is a version. There is a version for. So here, that was about closed surface groups. There is a version with for uh, surfaces with boundary. Um, um, okay. Uh, Yes. Well, there are, there are two options. So either you are, you are, you, 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 yes, yes. So either, either you, you are, you're here and, and then you have to be quasi-convex and you have to be a finite index in a free factor, or you're there and you're definitely not quasi-convex. Uh, yes, so there is a version for surfaces with boundary where you, you ask that a, um, that a pseudo anus of extends. Okay. Then, but then, uh, then you don't get that uh, uh, you're a free product. Maybe I should. I, so that's why I should, um, uh, uh, or maybe I should explain this. Um, mm -hmm. uh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Um, yes. Whatever the proofs. Uh, so let me explain this. So, uh, so he, here is. Okay. Assu assume that. So H, H is a surface with boundary. That's H, a fundamental group of this. And you have <laughs> alpha here, a pseudo of homeomorphism. Uh, then, so in, in the previous case, the only possibility uh, you, you get was that the, the, the group was a free factor. Here, there are more possibilities because you, you have those uh, boundary uh, Groups that are invariant under the group, so you can attach H to the to to um, to the group G uh, like this. So here here is a, a, a an instance where this group extends. So you you add uh, okay. So assume that so H is this group here, and this this is uh, G. Okay, and then. Uh, <coughs> It's uh, if the if the automorphism does not uh, permute the, the boundary component, that it will extend to uh, an automorphism. G. It's not a free factor. It's it's um, it's a vertex group in a cyclic decomposition. It's a QH group. But that's not the only possibility. There is also this finite index possibility. And w what really can happen is that this H, you know, uh, there is a, this finite cover where maybe th there could be. Finite. It could the the the, the, the pseudo could have some symmetry. Could go down to a to a, a finite cover uh, of the surface, and the possibility could be something like this. And that could be G. And that could be an H. Could be like here a, a, a cyclic cover of of this group, and here alpha would would extend, and that's another possibility. So there's the theorem says that's the only possibility. Uh, a, a subsurface of H that it covers it. Uh, this is a, a, a real, real a pseudo anusov. No? So I'm not sure what you mean. There's no, there's no curve invariant in this guy. I, I'm just look at this, this case. That H is a subsurface. Yes, but uh, here you can. Y th this this could be a, a part of a larger surface. Oh, y yes, I, I, I yes. He, okay, yeah. yeah. You, you here you can you could. I I don't say anything about that. You can enlarge the surface this way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So so the theorem says. So that so in the first, um, the first possibility is uh, is actually this. As it has to be replaced by this, and the second possibility does not is not um, does not occur because uh, because you would create uh, Z two because th there is if if, if uh, alpha was um, was um, induced by inner automorphism that this inner automorphism would um, would commute with the boundary groups so there would be a 
does not. Uh, yes. Okay. Um, let me not mention a, a, a last one, but uh, uh, <laughs> too late. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I don't mention it. And just <laughs> <laughs> so we, we have also a result thing. So here we, we start with just one complicated automorphism, and but things get n nicer. I mean, neater if you allow like every automorphism, for instance, to extend. For instance. In this case, you, you, you don't have this finite index stuff. Um, this is not possible if every automorphism uh, you ask it to, to extend. And in, in this case, so you, you, can describe, you, you can describe more or less what, what uh, you, don't, you don't have any hypothesis on, on H, like a closed surface group or a free group. You can basically start with any finitely generated subgroup. And, and so we, we have a statement saying take a hyperbolic group, take a finitely generated subgroup, and assume that every automorphism of H extends to G. Well, then th the, 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 the embedding of H in G is, is, um, is complicated, but simple. I mean, it's, 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 it's a bit complicated. I mean, you have to do, I mean, yeah. And, um, but, but from this embedding, you can see that all, uh, uh, that all automorphism, automorphisms extend. Okay, and let me stop here.